Too much fruit? What does that mean? Is it more better? The answer is no. And in fact, growers from around the world commercially thin their fruit in order to ensure a larger fruit set and also a more delicious fruit. Allowing all the fruit to set can be a bad thing for many reasons. And that's what we're gonna cover in today's lesson. Hi, my name's Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants and author of Saving the World with the Home Garden and today we're going to talk about the importance of fruit thinning. This fruit tree behind me is a Dapple Supreme Zager Genetic fruit tree. And some of you that have been following us for the last few years remember when we visited the Zager Orchard and we got to meet with the late Floyd Zager and as well as with Tom Spellman of Dave Wilson Nursery. And the Zager Genetic Orchard is a place where Floyd Zager for many decades has been planting upwards of 50,000 fruit trees a year to only pick the top two, maybe top four out of 50,000 fruit trees. Floyd Zager is known as the most prolific stone fruit breeder of the modern era where he basically crossed, and these are his specialty fruits, are peaches, apricots, plums, nectarines, um, and cherries. These hybrids are created the same way you would create a hybrid tea rose, for example, crossing a red rose with a white rose to make a pink rose or any variation between the red and the white. Similarly, what he's done here, and I can take a look here, the parents of this particular um, plant was the Dapple Dandy, a very popular um, variety from, again, Floyd Zager and the Flavor Supreme. So he took the the male or the pollen from one of the trees and combined it with the ovary or the fruit of the other tree. So again, the Dapple Dandy with the Flavor Supreme to create this tree here, which is the Dapple Supreme. This is the child. And what I wanna share with you here is this here is a parent plant that is supporting hundreds of children. The fruit, when you bite into it, is still of the parent. The flesh is identical. Every single fruit tastes the same but the seeds within it are all genetically different. It's the pollen from one male and the ovary from the female that create the new seed in the next generation. I can plant these hundred seeds and have a hundred different variations of what this now Dapple Supreme has made potentially crossed with that's here within the fruit orchard. Um, again, as it can cross with any of the other plums and apricots and cherries and peaches as their genetics are all related and can create more hybrid fruits. For those of you watching this for the first time, this may be an introduction to Floyd Zager and all of his accomplishments. And I'll put links to when we visited that orchard and all of the information that we learned while at the Zager Genetic Orchard. It's also important to note that Dave Wilson Nursery is the leading distributor of the Zager Genetic fruit trees in the country. So for the backyard orchard grower, there's a whole list of Zager Genetic fruit trees such as this one, that we can buy. And then there's also an entire category of Zager genetic fruit trees, ideal for the commercial grower. The big difference is that for the commercial grower is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the fruits can withstand the travel as they need to be picked and handle the two to three or more weeks that it's gonna to take to get to market. And then the other thing for the commercial grower is more so the looks and not necessarily the flavor. Um, for us and for the backyard grower, all of the Zager genetic fruit trees for the backyard grower have been designed predominantly leading factor is, you know, consistent fruit yields. And the other one is delicious flavor. And we have truly been enjoying several of the Zager genetic fruit trees. And I'm going to put here on the screen, uh, my top four that I've got growing here on my property. And this is a list that I got also from Tom Spellman as you know, ones that you should seriously consider in integrating into your backyard orchard. Um, and we're proud to share that Ivory Organics will be making these trees available um, at specific times, very narrow windows throughout the year as well. Um, and we're happy to be able to distribute these Dave Wilson nurseries to you through the Ivory Organics channel as well. So be sure to check out the Ivory Organics website for upcoming news relating to that as well. So helpful tip number one when it comes to fruit thinning is when do you fruit thin? And the answer is you're gonna wanna fruit thin your trees once the fruit are really between the size of a nickel and a quarter. A dime, I would say, is a little, little bit too small because you're gonna wanna see if the fruit actually set. The tree will naturally abort some of the fruit that it knows is not going to set just because that connection between the fruit and the parent plant 
isn't strong enough to support the fruit. So the plant will naturally abort some of the smaller fruit. So I usually wait until it's closer to about a nickel to a quarter in size. And as you can see, I'm way past that. The other thing is, and here we are now in late May and some of these fruit are beginning to ripen. I'm trying to show you here some of the ripest fruit right here. This fruit, again, relative to the money here in my hand, should be at least double the size. And there have been years that we have harvested fruit. And this tree, just to let you know, was planted by Isabel and myself about three years ago, when we visited Floyd Zager, the first thing we did is rush to the local nurseries that carry these Dave Wilson nursery fruit trees. And we picked what we thought was the best. And we're actually truly happy that we've got this here on our property. Again, the Dapple Supreme um, Zager genetic fruit tree. And it's just, again, such an awesome fruit tree. So we planted it again about three years ago. We have enjoyed fruit off of it um, in the first year and in the second year. But this year it's just exploding with fruit set. And I wanted to teach this lesson in regards to what happens when you don't thin. And we're gonna talk about what happens. But first, again, we're still on this topic number one as, as to when do I thin? And the answer is probably in the first to second month, you're gonna get fruits that are gonna be between that nickel and that quarter size and you should be removing them. The other thing you should be looking for, and actually since I've got this fruit in my hand, let's take a bite together. So take a look at the skin. You can see that it's kind of, as I'm holding it, some of this film that's on the outside. And this is a natural phenomenon. It's on all the fruit. And it's not pollution. It's just what the fruit does to itself is it basically protect, protects it um, with this light film. And you can see that the color is changing. You can see that this variety of plum is supposed to be kind of reddish with green speckled skin. check that out helpful tip number two check out the fruit and see what the tree is naturally trying to abort and I'm gonna show you what that looks like if you take a look at this fruit set over here you can see that these are already developing color and again we're not going by the color but going by size and you can see that this one here is really not connected well to the parent tree and it's because of that, the movement of the sugars and nutrients and, and energy is just not happening here. So you would take off this fruit and I'm also gonna take off this other smaller one in the back, leaving these two behind. When it comes to thinning fruit, a good practice is for every cluster of fruit to only keep one or two. We're going to thin it. And again, you can see that there was two fruit sharing this one spot. When I pulled it out, it actually broke part of the stem over here. So this is gonna come off too. No big deal. I'm gonna talk about the reasons why taking off the fruit is actually gonna help this tree for the years to come. So here we go, we're gonna twist this guy off. Check out the difference in this fruit compared to that. So this one that's inferior, out she goes. Right here. You can see this cluster, this one over here. We're gonna try to twist it out, but look at that, it's like locked in there. I might lose all three of them just trying to get this one out, but here, here it goes. So, we talked about fruit size, we talked about those fruit that are inferior, but now you're also looking for damaged fruit. So this one's even got color, but there's some scarring and, and, and maybe again from that pressure of all three of them being together. These actually got damaged. You're gonna see other fruit here that got damaged. You can remove all of those. And I know some of you guys are watching this and it's probably more painful that we're down to the final week or two of these fruit ripening. And it's like, why are you doing this now? Is that these are gonna get about twice as heavy in the next week or two, causing even further damage to the tree. That damage I'm gonna share with you in just a second. So again, check this out, imperfect fruits. And again, when you have so many, you're gonna to wanna to take them out. So those are the basic principles for thinning fruit. Quite simple and easy. And again, it's something you should consider doing in that first month or two. And again, consider the size of the fruit and really try to get in there when the 
fruit set is about one fourth of the actual mature size of the fruit. So now we're gonna go into the reasons why thinning fruit is so important to the overall health and longevity of the trees and the consistent annual harvest of delicious fruit on your property. And one of them is making sure that you thin the fruit for the purposes of making sure that the resources within the tree and ultimately those resources that are from the soil. And we're gonna talk about the importance of feeding your tree using the Ivory Organics all-purpose fertilizers to give your plants all of the six macronutrients that plants need. And by having all the nutrition in the soil, the plant's gonna have everything it needs to support maximum fruit set. But again, once you've got maximum fruit set as we accomplished here, the goal is to thin the fruit so that those resources go to benefit those fruits that you're gonna enjoy. Another important reason to thin the tree is that it's going to, again, going back to the resources of the tree, by thinning the tree, you're gonna have more resources for the plant to actually grow and be stronger and healthier and more established and so forth. All of this fruit on the tree is actually killing the tree. Of all of the Zager genetic fruit trees that we have here on our property, this is the weakest looking one and again, it's got more fruit on it. So it's one of the more productive ones if we're looking at fruit yields, but in regards to overall health, this is the weakest looking one. And again, I'm gonna show you towards the end what the other Zager genetic fruit trees on our property are looking like. And you can see that they're larger, they're healthier, they're more leafy, and they're supporting a good quantity of fruit that also need to be thinned out, which we're gonna be doing a little bit of together as well. So again, it's important for the overall health and strength of the tree to make sure you're thinning your fruit trees so that the plant can overall be just a happier, healthier plant from year to year. Another reason which relates to the overall health of the plant is that by thinning the plant, you will also prevent the risk of alternate bearing fruiting years. And that is a phenomenon where the plant gives up so much of its resources in one year, as it's happening here right now, that the plant needs to recoup in the successive years. So next year, it's gonna end up possibly saving its resources and not allowing those flowers to set fruit so that it can recoup its energy for a following year of fruit and to prevent a risk of having to wait another year to enjoy delicious fruit. Wouldn't it be so much better to enjoy half as much fruit, but ensuring that you're going to have fruit every single year in your garden for you and your family to enjoy. And that is a principle of the backyard orchard grower is to ensure that we're having probably less quantity. We also plant a little bit more densely because the goal at the end of the day is to enjoy delicious fruit pretty much every single month of the entire year. If you've got enough land or containers where you can accomplish this, where the different fruit are setting fruit at different times, you know, in different months throughout the year. And so the goal is again, we don't want to have an alternate bearing fruit tree. We want to make sure every year we're enjoying the benefits of all of the trees that we have here on our property. And again, thinning fruit is going to help you accomplish that goal. The most obvious of reasons to thin your fruit is to make sure that your tree structure doesn't get broken. You've spent the first year, two, and three working on that structure of the tree, trying to create that open vase, that open airy structure, allowing air to pass through, which helps reduce on pest damage, as well as increasing air circulation, which again also reduces on disease and, and just creates an overall healthier, longer lasting tree only to let those branches break due to the weight of the fruit that it's supporting. And so again, another important reason to thin the tree. And so the reason for thinning your fruit when it comes to protecting your limbs is to prevent the limb breakage. I noticed as I was thinning the fruit off of this branch, you can see that the branch is cracked over here and just behind it, it's broken and supporting all of these fruit, which will continue to ripen as long as there's a connection. And let's see if we can maybe get, I don't know, a couple of fruit to ripen on this broken branch. But if I leave them all, this branch is toast. It's gonna fall and break. But again, this is part of the structure that didn't have to break if I didn't have about 10 fruit hanging on this one to two year old branch. So um, yeah, this is toast. So here we go. But again, by thinning, more of the nutrients and resources will go to benefit. And it's not just larger fruit, it's gonna be more delicious, better tasting fruit by relieving some of the stress on the plant. Again, check out the stressed out branch, supporting another 10 fruit. 
within about six inches. Let's relieve some of that stress together. Even though this one is larger, you can see it's imperfect in many ways. This one here, out. I'm gonna keep some of the greener ones. Take that guy off. Check out the tips are even supporting more fruit. And I'm gonna take those off as well. And just leave these two. Again, they're more stable since they're closer to um, the arch in the tree. So if you take a look here at the ground, you can see we've taken out quite a bit of fruit. And again, I'm probably gonna be removing another two to three times more fruit in the next few minutes. Here's another one that was imperfect. And some of you may notice that there's actually some whitewash protection on here. And again, when we planted this about three years ago, we used the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard, protection from damaging summer sunburn and insects and rodents. And what this does is help to protect the tree just as our skin. In the summer, we're dealing with 14 hours of daylight as well as you know the warmest temperatures of the year. And as the sun comes through and as the canopy is actually quite thin right now, again, because all, all the most of the resources this year went into fruiting and less into growing, but had it had a better canopy, all of this tree trunk and lower branches would be in the shade. So as we harvest the fruit, we're gonna talk about summer pruning in about the next two weeks as we enjoy the rest of this fruit harvest. I'm gonna harvest the fruits and then together, we're gonna prepare this tree for what is known as summer pruning. And that's where we're going to adjust the height of the tree so that it pushes out one more flush of growth that will set the most maximum number of blossoms come spring and another fantastic fruit set for the, you know, for the next year. And again, we're gonna be using the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard to organically protect the tree, again, from damaging summer sunburn, as well as you know the protection going into winter as winter sun scald as well as insects and rodents um, from penetrating any of the pruned branches, as well as any damage that may exist within the tree. And also for the summer pruning, we're gonna also be sure to feed the plant one more time. And we're gonna be using, as we've always been using, the Ivory Organics All-Purpose Fertilizers, which have not just NPK, which most of the fertilizers focus on these three macronutrients, but plants need six macronutrients. These are nutrients the soil must have in abundance in order for optimal plant health and growth. NPK, nitrogen is usually for growth and greening, phosphorus for fruiting and flowering, potassium for disease develop, um, resistance as well as root establishment. The magnesium, which is another one of the macronutrients is in the heart of the chlorophyll molecule, sulfur important also for the greening of the plant, and then calcium, which is in all of the growing cell walls of your plant. So again, for optimal growth, you also need to make sure the soil has sufficient quantities of calcium. And the Ivory Organic All-Purpose Fertilizers have all of those six macronutrients. In addition to, the Super Blend has azomite, which is crushed volcanic rock to deliver a lot of the micronutrient nutrition to your plants. Be sure to check out that lesson, which will be coming up in the next two to three weeks where we're gonna be talking about summer pruning. I can share with you down below some lessons we've done in the past, but if you wanna see exactly how we take care of this particular plue out here on our property together, be sure to follow us by subscribing and hitting that push bell notification to get informed as soon as we publish that lesson. Ivory Gangs has a sale on these starter blueberry plants. Simply by going to ivoryorganics.com, we've got limited inventory of these sunshine blueberries from Four Winds Growers. We did the lesson just a few weeks ago with the owner, Aaron Dillon of Four Winds Growers, where he shared with us some helpful tips on potting your sunshine blueberry as we did over here together with four winds growers and these plants are a limited quantity and once we sell out we sell out for the year so if you're interested in adding a sunshine blueberry variety which is a self-fertile grows in grow zones of grow zone five and up all the way to ten and as you can see they're thriving so very beautifully well here in our garden this this one here was planted about three to four years ago and thriving here in this canopy between our figs and our apples and our, you know, our pluot over there and another pluot over here. And you can see they do very well, again, in container. For those of you that are living, whether it be, you know, where you've got ample garden space or if you're living, you know, with a, just a patio, blueberries are ideal for container life, even better than putting them in the ground. And that's just a general rule of all fruit trees. One of the best ones for container life are blueberries. And for those of you that are container gardeners, or for me, it's kind of a blend of in-ground and containers, these are the ideal candidate. And I'm hoping you guys incorporate blueberries also into your backyard orchards. 
another reason just came to mind for thinning your fruit. Here we are in Southern California, another year with another drought, less fruit, less water. Who would have thought? If you can come up with another reason for thinning your fruit trees, I'd love to hear from you. Simply write in the video comments below. I'll be checking those out and would love to hear your feedback or if you just have something nice to say, we always welcome that too. If you've enjoyed this lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us that thumbs up and most importantly, share us with your gardening friends and family. And also, if you have not yet already subscribed, be sure to subscribe and hit the push bell notification. Again, there's a lesson coming up pretty soon on summer pruning and the things that I'm doing here on my garden, I'm encouraging you guys to be doing in yours as well. Hit that push bell notification and I'll be doing another lesson on summer pruning and the benefits there. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening. For those of you that are still watching, let me share with you the other few Zager genetic fruit trees that we have here in our garden. So this one here is called the Emerald Drop Pluot. Another one that was highly recommended by Tom Spellman, Dave Wilson Nursery. Check out these fruit. And it's still about a month away from them ripening in regards to thin fruit thinning. Again, the inferior fruit is this little one over here. This one over here, it's got a little bit of a blemish. And now we've got two fruit here, couple there. I'm gonna go in with my scissors and prune these two because they're sharing the same stem. So I'm gonna leave those two for now. This one here below, taking that off. When we talk in a couple of weeks about summer pruning, this is one that we did not prune last year. This is the result. This is a semi-dwarf. My reach is eight feet. The tree's gotta be at least 16 feet tall. Um, and again, you can see some of these fruit are a little bit past eight feet. I, can, I can't even touch that one. So you can see um, when you don't prune, the fruit are gonna end up out of reach. And that's gonna be another problem because that's gonna be more fruit we're not gonna get to enjoy here on our property. And again, those are resources that are being wasted again. So when it talks about conservation of fertilizer and water and your efforts, um, again, these are all factors to consider when pruning your tree is to make sure that all of those resources that are going into your garden are going to the benefit of you and your family. And let me share with you the next tree. And this one here is a favorite of so many gardeners known as the Spice Z Nectar Plum. So it's a cross between a nectarine and a plum. But the coolest thing about it is the red foliage. Check out all of the fruit. And now that we did the lesson on fruit thinning, we can now look for the imperfect fruit and start removing them. As you can see, this one's got some blemishes on it. And wherever the fruit are crowded, you can see again about the aborted fruit we talked about earlier, the tree naturally dropped this one and that one and that one. And again, look at how this one's so much smaller compared to the siblings next to it. And we can now clean these up. But check out how dramatically beautiful and what an accent tree this is. And usually this is the first go-to for most people looking for an ornamental slash fruit tree for their property. The Spice Z Nectoplum. So behind me is that Zager Genetics row of fruit trees that we've dedicated here on our property to the late Floyd Zager. And um, again, I hope you've enjoyed this educational lesson brought to you by Every Organics. And if so, again, be sure to give us that thumbs up, share us with your gardening friends and family. Don't forget to keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.